There you go, friends. January in Ohio. We had about a foot of snow the other day. Yesterday it was 45 degrees. Today it's 22 degrees. And it is snowing again. That's always fun. Hey, what's happening, guys? We're back here looking at the simulator again. This is Multisim, a free online simulator from National Instruments. I got comments the last time I did this. Well, you know, I can't get this. I have to pay for it. No, you don't. It's free. It's online. I don't know what you're trying to download. There's nothing to download. You just go to their website. Anyway, what we're going to talk about today is the basic operation of a buck converter circuit and how the ESR of certain components can affect that circuit. The ESR, if you're not familiar, is the equivalent series resistance. You, we talk about that with inductors and capacitors. Devices that do provide resistance, but not as their primary function, like a resistor. Okay? Think about it like this. If your electric circuit is a hose with water flowing through it, anything you put in there is going to impact the flow in some way everything's connected always remember that all right so we start with our basic buck converter circuit here down here we just have a simple pulse wave modulated generator on off as you can see here i wrote um you said it's for a hundred one volt equals a hundred percent so we're at about twenty percent we are going to buck 24 volts down to five volts basically okay so here we have our voltage source, battery, wall wart, lab power supply, whatever, it doesn't matter. But we have a 24 volt voltage source. The positive from that voltage source is going to feed this top rail here, our VCC rail. And on that rail, you are going to find this MOSFET. You are going to find the cathode of this diode. And then going across the rail, you are going to find the inductor, and then crossing the two rails, the positive and the ground, you will find this capacitor, and then you will find our load. So basically what's going to happen is this MOSFET is going to switch this part of the circuit on and off. As it does, a charge is going to build up in the inductor. When the MOSFET switches states, the inductor is going to, the, the magnetic field in the inductor is going to collapse and is going to squirt its burst of current out, which can be stored in this capacitor to build up until we have enough that we're getting the voltage we want over here, which we'll call 5 volts. So let's start up the simulation. And then I'm going to move in here and split the screen so we can see. First thing we have here is before the inductor, our current. And that is this purple line right here. And you can see it is peaking at about 1.8, well, I'll call it 1.9 amps. It's continually peaking. It charges, it discharges a simple sawtooth wave. Our minimum is 100. 45 milliamps. Next we have the current after the inductor and that is the green line and you can see that is relatively steady at just under an amp and then we have the voltage here which is what we want at our load and that's 4.9 dropping down to maybe 4.8 then this other line here you can see is just our PWM signal. So, what can change? What things can change here? Well, first of all, we can change the duty cycle. And this is what you're controlling if you have one of those little uh, buck modules and it has a trimmer potentiometer on it. So, we're at uh, about 20%. Let's take it up to, let's say, right around 50% and see what happens there. So now at 50%, you can see our marked space is pretty much on. Our current before the inductor now is almost 4 amps. And our current after the inductor 
is two and a half amps and our voltage is off the chart here because it is up to 12 volts so what happens if you turn this thing fully on nothing you get what you put what you put in you get out and what happens if you turn it fully off basically zero you just simply switched it off 240 microvolts so let's put it back where we want it right so we get just about five volts on our output come on there we go so that's one thing you could change that would make an impact well what's the next thing well the inductor the inductor is what is storing and putting out your current so we're at 22 micro henry's let's take it down to say 10 micro henry's now you see our voltage has climbed and our voltage is really oscillating now our current before the inductor is now three and a half amps our current after the inductors remain pretty steady what happens if we take it way up Well, it's kind of gotten better hasn't it? we've really improved our voltage is very steady but we're looking at 4.9 on the highest part and 4.9 on the lowest part 4.9173 so that is really nice that's nice and steady let's put it back somewhere about halfway I know we we're at 22 we'll, we'll leave it at yeah let's put it back where it was and watch watch the current before the inductor that's down here this is dash purple line right about where we were and if we increase that look at that now 100 micro henry's our current before the inductor is maxing out at 1.17 amp minimum 0.729 amp so why wouldn't you just throw in the highest value you have well because everything affects everything else and this is a very careful balancing act if you're trying to do this you know in a production environment all right so the next thing in, in line don't worry about these yet these are these are our modeled ESRs the equivalent series resistance of the inductor and the equivalent series resistance of the capacitor so let's change our capacitor 29.5 microfarad in my opinion is quite low so let's take it up to let's make it a hundred microfarad well what is that done just watch watch our voltage line here does it do you see anything appreciable happening no but once we drop down below where are we at 22 once we drop down below that whoa look at that look at that ripple maddening huh and now look at our voltage up here it's just all over the place well, what if we go bigger there's a hundred microfarad how about a farad <laughs> hundred millifarad ten millifarad the changes aren't significant at this point let's put it about a hundred microfarad that's what I like hundred microfarad that gives us a nice smooth output current so next up we have our load what happens if we change the load there's five ohms what if we say 50 ohms whoa our voltage just shot right up there didn't it we're up to 12 volts what if we bring it down half an ohm even less well now we're affecting our voltage again so you see the output voltage is affected on the load as well so there's where we started out five ohms let's change our load to 50 ohms and now we're looking at 12 volts there 
well, what can we do to change things? Can we change our capacitor? Will that smooth things out any? No, not really. Let me get this back where I was. <laughs> what about our inductor? What does changing the inductor do? Yeah, changing the inductor makes a difference. Let's put this up to 100 microhenries, which is quite a large inductor. So 100 microhenries, our voltage is now at 6.6, .6, a little too much. You know, we want we don't want that much. Well, what if we? Well, we don't want to go that way. We adjust our PWM. Now our duty cycle is just about 14%. We're at 4.94. Let's take it up just a little bit. 15%. 15% is just about perfect for what we want there. Our current before the inductor is quite low, 283 milliamps. Our current after the inductor, 102 milliamps. Now this is starting to look like something that would be viable. Less current equals less heat. You know, heat is bad unless you're making a heater. So what if our load changes now? What if we go back down to five? Oh, well, we lost some of our voltage. What if it goes up? 50. 100 ohms. See, everything is, is, is very dependent. So are you going to have a 5 ohm load or are you going to have a 50 ohm load? You know, that's a factor of 10 and that's going to make a big difference. All right, so let's put this back down to our 5 ohm load and adjust. Come on, get over there. Adjust this back to where we had it, which is just about here. Here, there we go. So now let's talk about them nasty parasitics. So the ESR on this inductor is 10 and a half mega ohms. What happens if it changes? What if it goes to one mega ohm? Things still look pretty good. Nothing much changes there. Voltage stays pretty stable. Pre-inductor current is at 1.15. So we completely take that out of the question. Not much has changed. What about the ESR of the capacitor? What happens when it changes? Oh, look at that there. Now we're getting some changes here because the resistance of that capacitor has changed. It has more or less trouble putting out the uh, voltage that it was storing. I know this can be a little bit daunting to understand right off the bat. So I am going to make this available for you guys to play with. I'll put a link down below and hopefully you get a better idea of how every piece of a circuit works together and everything affects everything else. You have parasitic resistances, parasitic capacitances. Um, the resistance of the circuit board itself, everything plays a part when you design something. And that's why this diode here says ideal. It has no ESR. It has no parasitic capacitance. It has no parasitic resistance. These are things that affect the circuit. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.